decided to care about how I looked for this particular one. <laughs> one of my eyebrows is uneven. Maybe I don't care. The question I asked for this one is, who is this show for? And my first note is, I messed up in this one. It's cool. So like laying that expectation out for you. <laughs> Coming into Rooster Teeth in 2015, my interpretation of a lot of the stuff the company was about was comedy, more on the adult humor side. And funny enough though, the reason I got into- I hit my mic. The reason why I got into Rooster Teeth in the first place uh, was because of Ruby. So not exactly adult comedy, but it hit the things I was really into growing up. Girls growing up, girls being cool, girls punching stuff, um, just baby gay. A dumb monkey man with abs running after a cat girl, just a little baby. I mentally put it next to a lot of young adult books that I like reading. The Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan, Juliet Marillier's Wildwood Dancing, ton of manga and anime about high schoolers, Harry Potter, but we don't talk about her anymore. So, like, statistically, if you look at the perceived demographic of people who are involved in young adult series and that sphere, it's a lot of women and a lot of girls. It's supposed to be about this really formative time in a person's life where they start to experience and think about themselves outside of their bubble. It's not exactly the audience Rooster Teeth originally had when they first started, but I wanted to spread these wings out too other kinds of audiences, other kinds of people. Kind of like what Ruby did for me. So there. This show is for the young adult audience coming of age. But wait, there could be more. Why do people make things? Is there an intended audience? What is your responsibility as a creator to an audience? I think these are heavy questions with just as heavy answers. And everyone who answers them will have something different. These questions make it hard for me to fully lean into who is this show for. Honestly, I, I feel like I'm masking my selfish intentions with good ones. The truth is, sometimes I think the show is for me. <gasps> I wanted to make this show because I wanted to challenge myself and embrace a different kind of storytelling. Something where I limit what people see and then break the rules I set up in the first place. I wanted to put girls like me on the forefront. I wanted to put people who you wouldn't normally see in this day and age in American animation on screen. I wanted to take these feelings of Asian American diaspora in my soul and incorporate them into something productive for myself and my art and to express how I relate to having one foot in your home country and the other in the country you only ever knew about and what it means when your body is constantly straddling that line of torn and inadequate and desiring to engage all at once. There's this famous piece of writing advice. Write what you know. But there's a point where you've written all you could, and you wonder what's next. So then I heard this one. Write what you want to learn about. I can write what I know, and I want to look at what I've experienced and make sure the lessons I learned are in there as well. What's that gif? Um, growth. Two down, one to go. Stay tuned for the next video diary. See y'all later. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode. If you like this stuff, you should check out I Have Notes or go ahead and click on one of the videos on screen to keep watching more Rooster Teeth animated content. Or you can even go to roosterteeth.com and watch the show that we were talking about recorded by Arsal. Oh my god, you have so many choices. I'm really happy for you. Please go. <laughs>